So my thank time you, doesn't Chris. start. Okay, so thank you, uh, Dr. Niaz, for a nice introduction. So I'll straight go on to my next slide. Oh, sorry, here. Okay, so objectives of my talk today, we're gonna talk about stroke mimics, then we're gonna jump onto stroke chameleons. Uh, we'll find the clues to diagnose both, and we'll talk about some real cases as well. Uh, so, and I will get some uh, interaction with the audience here as well, although it's getting shorter and shorter now. So uh, how do you recognize stroke from stroke mimics? Okay, I follow this principle, which is called, I call it the duck principle. The duck principle that if it looks like a duck, swims like a duck and quacks like a duck, then probably it is a duck. So, but to know the duck, you, know, you should really know the stroke symptoms very well. So what are those? I think probably there is, like everyone knows, it's about focal neurological dysfunction. That's the most common uh, symptoms or signs we see. We, the onset is in seconds, not hours, not days, it's in seconds. Exceptions are there though. It's a negative phenomena, not positive phenomena. When I, I'm sure all of you are familiar with the negative phenomena, it's loss of something. Very rarely we get loss of consciousness. So uh, very often my residents, my colleagues ask me that could this patient have a TIA? He came in with a syncope. Very rare. You can't have a rare, you can't have a loss of consciousness and then you call it as a stroke or a TIA. Look for other things. Of course, we look for vascular risk factors, but remember in stroke mimics and chameleons or strokes, actually the risk factors can be present because we are living in that age where risk factors are getting more and more. So what is stroke mimic and chameleon? Anybody would like to differentiate. So stroke mimic is like, looks like a stroke, but it's not, okay? I'm sorry for those who are uh, fans of Trump. Looks like, so chameleons, it looks like other condition, but actually it's a stroke. So I don't know whether you can recognize this. So this is a chameleon. Can you see this? This is a picture I took myself in Dubai Aquarium, okay? You hardly can see it. So you have to actually see, that's what chameleon is, that it will look like it's not a stroke, but actually there is, and it's hidden. So I'm gonna talk more about more and more about chameleon later on, but let's just focus on stroke mimics. We often think that maybe it's the ED, maybe it's the internal medicine. They are the culprits, they can't diagnose. This is a data from stroke unit from London, hyperacute stroke unit London. And what it's showing you is that up to 25% of the patients actually who went to the stroke unit found out that they had not a diagnosis of stroke, they had stroke mimics. So, but more importantly also, if you see the 72% of the stroke mimics had at least one stroke risk factor. So they were not wrong because they had diabetes, hypertension, some risk factors or age, they went into the stroke unit, but the ultimate diagnosis was not a stroke. What about the pre, so this is from Montreal, Canada. So stroke mimics by EMS, so EMS diagnosing them as a stroke, okay? You can't fault them. Look at this, 42% are stroke mimics. So some of our colleagues when in internal medicine and ED, when they see these patients and they think that, oh my God, I couldn't diagnose the, I, I, I diagnosed this as a stroke, but actually it was a mimic. Don't feel bad about it because it is common that you will miss, you will either miss or you will diagnose stroke, which is actually is a stroke mimic. So what are the common presentation of stroke mimics in ENE? You can see that seizures are very common, syncope, sepsis, functional, lots of disorders, headache disorders, metabolic, they're all very common in stroke mimics in ENE. So I'm gonna switch gears. Those of who you are interested in stroke mimics, actually I have a, a lecture on stroke mimics in YouTube, it's available if you want to go, but we're gonna now more focus on stroke chameleons. Like, as I said, like looks like a, it uh, looks like it's not a stroke, but actually it is a stroke. So this is a data from, again, pre-hospital stroke scales. And if you see the altered mental status was the most common diagnosis among the missed acute ischemic stroke. And they missed up to 30% of acute strokes in the field. So we're talking about, again, uh, the EMS who going in the field and trying to find out whether it's a stroke or not. And that altered mental status was the first, one of the most important thing where they actually missed the stroke. So what are the clues to chameleons in history? One clue I've already given you, it is actually altered mental status, but there's more to it actually. 
because you all can see that we see every day, especially the ones in ED or internal medicine, they see a lot of patients with altered mental status in ER, okay? But what are the two major clues? Verbal fluency and content of speech. So when you are looking at them, you are actually looking at their verbal fluency and their see speech, how is it? The tendential speech is very common in delirium patients. On the other hand, you have to see whether they are fluent but not making sense or non-fluent but making sense. These are the clues going towards actually stroke chameleons. Second most common after altered mental status is dizziness. So again, I'm sure all of you are familiar with patient just came in with the dizziness. And there are lots of things that this is when talking about acute vestibular syndrome, vestibular neuronitis, you know about this, but the, the clue is that they are still dizzy at rest. So these are the patients who have still dizziness at rest. What is transient episodic vestibular syndrome? So these are episodic. You have heard about BPVB. The important thing is that they are asymptomatic at rest and they are less than one minute episodes mostly. So these are the patients who will get transient episodic vestibular syndrome. They'll get these episodes, they will get better, okay? And they are mostly at asymptomatic at rest. You also have some spontaneous episodic vestibular syndrome like migraine patients. So you, they'll have like a vestibular migraine. With the migraine, they get a lot of dizziness or VVS is a vasovagal syncope or panic attacks. So even the patients who with panic attacks, they are asymptomatic in between, but they get dizzy spells in between. So we call as spontaneous episodic vestibular syndrome. The third symptom, again, a clue to chameleons is headache. So headache, as you know, that it's like a pressure-like headache. If it's a chameleon, it will be more of a pressure-like. In examination, there are two things which I will only ask you to do. One is that make them walk, especially if you see them in the ER, if you see them in the acute settings and acute medicine unit, please make them walk. You will get lots of clues. You will get them truncal ataxia. You will see them falling on one side. This is a clue towards a chameleon. I'm sure you're all familiar with hints as well. So I'm gonna talk about more in the hints. Hints is head impulse, nystagmus test of skew. Now, head impulse test, nystagmus, test of skew deviation. Believe me, this is better than acute TW MRI. So what is head impulse? Head impulse is that abnormal head impulse means you hold onto the head, you ask the patient to move like this, and then briskly from one side, 30 degrees, you move into the center and you look for the catch-up second. This is head impulse. If it's head impulse is positive, this is reassuring, this is peripheral. Nystagmus is you look at both at primary gaze and lateral gaze and it's unidirectional is reassuring. Test of skew is cover and cover. So you cover and then you uncover. The eye which uncovers, okay, you look at the vertical gaze, whether the eyes move up, okay. And that's again, vertical, no vertical skew deviation is reassuring. So in short, the HINS test is actually, you're looking for head impulse. If it's normal or if it's vertical or bidirectional nystagmus or test of skew is abnormal, this is central. This is not peripheral. So we do have do diagnostic limitations. Often I hear, I hear from my colleagues, well, let's just do an MRI. But is MRI is the answer? You can see that CT is diagnostic only in 26% in these patients, and MRI is diagnostic in 83% patients. Even we saw that even the neurology consultation in ED, which I showed you from the st stroke unit, hyperacute stroke unit in London, or whether you talk about EMS, even the neurology consultation does not take you to the 100%. You will miss stroke mimics. You will miss stroke chameleons as well. So I'm going to now talk about a few cases and see what we can do. And I'll ask from the audience, what do they think about these patients? So case one, we have a 52 years old gentleman who has got 30 pack years of smoking. So you can see there's already a vascular risk factor. He had an argument with his family. Okay. And he came in with two days history of left-sided involuntary irregular movements. Stroke or not a stroke? Hands, hands up who thinks it's a stroke. One. Anybody else? Okay, so we think it could be a stroke mimic. CT had normal. So it, he was diagnosed with acute stress or psychosis episode, but the symptoms continued. So he was referred to us. We did an MRI brain, normal. So who thinks it's still a stroke or stroke mimic? 
who thinks it's a stroke? So a couple of you, okay. So is MRI brain as an answer? So we did extensive metabolic toxicology and infection screen, all negative. And that's the MRI, repeat MRI. So repeat MRI now showing uh, right centrum semi-avail. Uh, final diagnosis was actually actually those irregular involuntary movements were hemibilismus. So you just couldn't diagnose this hemibilismus. Okay, these were like one involuntary, irregular, like all over the place, like is it dancing, okay? Management is treat the etiology, tetrabenazine, haloperidol. The prognosis is actually quite good. I still remember that patient who was, when I was talking to him, he was like, he will hold his hand under him like this to talk to me so that he doesn't hit me. Here's two, 45 years old lady, who's a medical secretary. Again, uh, I wouldn't say a risk factor. I would say as a red flag for stroke mimic. History of migraine, okay? Another, uh, you can say, stroke going towards stroke mimic. Came in with isolated confusion for last six hours. Stroke or not a stroke? Possible, okay. CT had normal, okay? So she was diagnosed with possible encephalitis for which she had an LP, LP normal as well. So what do you think the diagnosis then? So what we didn't diagnose is dysphasia, okay? What we missed is that in the acute floor, in the acute medicine floor, what we missed was dysphasia. So everybody thought this is just confused. You remember I told about the chameleons, like what the clues, the clues is in the fluency of the speech, clues in the speech of content, okay? She was talking a lot, but what she was not talking wasn't making sense. So we got MRI right cortical infarct, okay? And she had a TEE, which showed a mass on the aortic valve. It's actually quite uh, uncommon. You all often have heard about atrial myxoma, but what you might not have heard about is cardiac papillary fibroelastoma. This is one of the very rare cardiac valve tumor, which we found. She had the surgery, job done. Management is surgery for her. So remove the cause of the stroke. So we presented, this is my younger brother, not me actually, in, in Nice, presented in 2014 uh, in uh, European Stroke Society. Yes, three. So 62 years old female, she's having postural shaking episodes. So every time she's walking about or what she classically described as that as she started to do painting at house. And when she was looking up the ladder, actually she starts getting shaking episodes in her legs. She was, taught, uh, she was diagnosed as seizure, but actually one of our uh, colleagues uh, started on Capra uh, and diagnosed as a focal epilepsy. So stroke or not stroke? Anybody guess except my stroke colleagues? So 12 days later, she presented with right-sided weakness and aphasia, big stroke. Her CT was normal. Her carotid Doppler fully occluded right ICA and 75% stenosis left ICA. We often talk about hyperperfusion syndrome. This is the limb shaking TIA. She had left carotid and artrectomy, but now by now she already had deficit. This is again my middle aged brother as well who presented in uh, uh, Prague in European Stroke Society. Here's four. So 49 years old lady, a known diabetic hypertension dyslipidemia. So lots of risk factors, as you could see, collapsed at home, okay? And collapse is another thing. It's, it's, you really need to know what collapse means, okay? Collapse for some means fall, collapse for some means loss of consciousness, collapse for some means altered mental status. It's really different. How do you call this collapse? Uh, some of my col uh, UK colleagues, you know that they used to have impression. I used to hate uh, collapse QD cause. They call it C, Question mark C, that was the diagnosis by one of our like residents or juniors will say C, query C. We used to hate it, really hate it. What does that mean? So GCS seven and fluctuating. Now again, this could be delirium as well, okay? She had amnesia, so diagnosis. We need a CT, isn't it here? CT normal, EEG normal as well, okay? So she was diagnosed with seizure slash sepsis. Sepsis screen all negative, LP negative. Diagnosis. Still stroke. Now we think this is stroke again because I'm keep presenting stroke chameleons. So she had an MRI which showed bilateral thalamic and midbrain infarct, which is actually artery of Percheron infarct. So again, we presented this in 
I think Belfast that was Bartholomew and midbrain artery perfusion syndrome, which actually again um, somebody who comes with these gaze palsies, who comes with amnesia and low GCS. So, looks like a stroke. He had a stroke. It's a brush with death. So, in summary. Stroke, mimic, stroke mimics and chameleons are common because for the sake of time, I did not present you stroke. Like, and that's why I said that you can go into the YouTube and see my stroke mimics uh, presentation. But I would really say that if you really want to diagnose either stroke mimics or chameleons, the clue is history, history, and history. Uh, some would argue to say that maybe MRI is the answer. Yes, MRI would help, but you really need to know the clinical diagnosis. What's your clinical diagnosis? I, I, will, I can't emphasize more on this thing, gait and hints, and it comes with the practice. You really, really need to do more and more on hints, okay? The more you do it, and the more you do it in the ER, the more you get better at it as well. MRI helps. Of course it helps, but not always. Thank you.